everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 188 of Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we're going to play with eggshells and um, I'm just going to give you some tips on some of the things that I've learned along the way um, over the time that I've done this. It was a request to use eggshells um, by one of you lovely ladies and I apologize for losing my notes but I don't know how many times y'all have heard that, but I do it constantly. So um, when I first thought about doing this, it was like, oh, I had all these ideas of things that I've done in the past, of things that I, you know, wanted to try. And that was quite a while ago, and now I've totally lost all of them. But I do have a lot of tips to give you, and um, so we're just going to go from there. So these are just some of the things that I've done. This is eggshell and sand. Now, we bought white sand for... Um, our build your stash and craft and that's what I have there and I just put down Elmer's glue and then put the sand in and then put the eggshells around it now one tip is it's really kind of cool when you're doing something a little larger like this to just add a little pop of color on a couple of eggshells here and there and um, it just like gives it that interest and you know just it's I just really like to do that so um and this one I used um alcohol inks on and so and I just patted them on with an alcohol ink sponge and then this one is um, also alcohol ink but you can just put them on this is just a piece of cardboard that I punched out of some recycled cardboard you can do weird things with them you would say why would she do that I made a little bird's nest in an eggshell and why would I do it because I can it, just because it was fun. I was cleaning things up. I found this little bird yesterday and he was sitting here and I thought, oh, that would be really cute. So I made him a little uh, little bird's nest inside that eggshell and decorated up the eggshell and I had fun with that. And that's the whole point. Creating is supposed to be fun. I put some on a flower. So um, this I use kind of as a coaster. Now this has a solid clear coat on it, um, like a lacquer or something, so I can use it as a coaster. But I use it as a coaster in my art room, not for my drinks anyways. Um, I have a, a glass jar that holds um, a bunch of my favorite um, paintbrushes, and um, it has all these little parts that comes out that my paintbrushes go in, and it looks really cute sitting on top of this. So that's what I use that for. These you can use for embellishments and, um, you know, on your projects or whatever, or just something to sit around because it looks cute. So um, that's what we're going to play with. Now I put them on the flower, and this flower, let's see, one of them is not, there's, that's the one that's not hooked. Um, this flower is very, um, like, sculptured. It has a lot of... Um, bend to it and of course your eggshells are hard so the way that I put it on the flower and those three are on there and see they're stuck on there now so but you have to give it a little bit of time to dry so just take your eggshell and you want to put glue all over the whole back of it because you're going to crack it after you do and so you want to make sure that every piece has glue on it after you crack it so that it stays glued on but then when I first crack it on here, because it has such texture to it, um, it kind of pushes back. So I just put it on there like that. Now you could put it on there like that and leave it whole. I like to press on it because that kind of gives it the shape of the, of the petal when it dries eventually. Now that's what I did. I just squished it to crack it. Now I'm going to let it set there for just a little bit and let that glue start to firm up a little bit and then I'll go back in and I will press it again. This piece right here is sticking up so when I go press it again I will press that piece down and to make it kind of more contour to the shape of this flower petal and like this one here this flower petal has a big V in it and the eggshell right there also has a big V in it. So even though it is glued down good, but it takes on the contour of that flower petal. And this would just be fun, just for the heck of it. I like the way that it looks. I used a little bit of the alcohol ink on the little plastic center, just to kind of make it all go together. And this was alcohol ink with clear fingernail polish on top as a clear coat. So we'll put that one up there and I'll have to remember to keep, which one was it? This one right here. I have to remember to keep giving that one a press when I get a chance. So um, first things first, actually after I already like showed you all of that, but I want to show you how to get your eggshells ready because this is the most important part. 
Okay, so I had to have an egg sandwich this morning just so I could do this. Now, what you need to do after you crack your eggs is you need to boil them. And what that's going to do is now, it, this is just a film that came out of part of the eggs. But you know how eggs have a, a film on the inside. You know, like when you peel a hard-boiled egg or whatever, you see it. And see, there it is. Right there. See that film coming off right there? You have to take all of that out. If you do not take that off, what happens is eventually, um, if you glue this onto a project, you let's say here, let's take this little piece right here as an example. Okay, so you have this eggshell here. You didn't take that backing off and you glued it down to a project. So what did you glue down? You glued down that little liner inside the egg. Eventually, it all dries up, and it may take, you know, a few months or whatever to do this, um, but you've glued this part, and that part is a nice solid piece, see? Um, that's going to stay glued, but what's going to start happening as it dries out is your eggshell is going to start falling off of that liner. So you want to make sure that you take this liner off completely and then just set your eggshells aside to dry. And now you have all these little tiny pieces, keep them. Because what are you gonna do with them? You're gonna scrunch them up into little tiny pieces. So don't think, oh, only keep the big pieces. Go ahead and keep the small pieces too. But, and so you just go ahead and just get it off as best as you can, like in one piece. Let's just put that back in there. And then like it broke, so just rub your finger on there. Now that just grabbed a hold of it. Now I can see here that I've got a big piece of it, but there's a spot missing in the middle right there. See? Um, so I know that I need to go back right there and get that piece out. And, and if you just rub in different directions, if you can't find it, you'll eventually find it and you can rub it out of there because you want to make sure that all of that's gone and then your eggshell will be good to go. And I would imagine, just because that liner is next to the actual, you know, egg, um, that by doing this too, because I store these in my art room, um, once they're prepared like this, I, I've stored them, you know, for a long time. Um, so, and I've never got any kind of bugs or anything like that in there, but maybe if you left the liner in there, that might be interesting to, to some kind of a, a bug or a mouse or something that might think, oh, I, I want to eat that because they can smell it or something. But the eggshell itself, I don't think would be a draw because I've never had a problem. So that is how you prepare your eggs. And so you're just going to put them in there. Usually I, um, you know, do quite a few of them at one time and then see how that just peels out of there. And sometimes it peels out so nice like this. And sometimes it just comes out little strip after little strip. And again, if you can't get a hold of it, just roll. And don't worry about if you crack your eggshell, no big deal. You're still going to be able to use it. Sometimes I like to keep as much of it as I can big. So if I want to do something that's a little bit larger area, I have a bigger piece to work with. And then I still keep all the little pieces. So that's how you're going to prepare your eggshell. Then I just, once they're done, especially with the big pieces, I set them this way on a napkin and just let them dry. So that is, don't forget to do that part, because if you forget to do that part, you may be disappointed later when your project starts coming apart. Um, okay, then you can color them with anything. They are a porous surface. They are not a non-porous surface. So you can use your alcohol inks on them, and your alcohol inks are darker. Oh, I wanted to show you. Okay, so I did that with the eggs. Forgot to show you this part. And, um... I wanted to show you, once they're like that, that's when you need to peel them. Don't let them sit and dry, because I wanted to see how hard it would be. I've never done it before, but I wanted to see how hard it would be to try and get that liner out. And see, you can see that the liners, I don't know if you can see that or not, but see, there's the little part that, you know, it's always got one spot that's kind of puffed up. And I can see that liner there, and I can kind of get a hold of it, but then when I go to pull on it, it just breaks off like tissue paper, and it would be really hard to get a hold of. And I think maybe if you got it wet, let's see. Let me get my finger wet. I can see a little piece of it here. Let me see if that will help me 
mm, it's peeling up a little bit, but not very well. So when you're ready to do it, boil them and then peel it because that piece does not want to come out. It doesn't want to come off the eggshell very well um, once it's dry. Now the thing is, is that it will eventually come off you know when it's dry so don't think that because I'm telling you it's hard to get off when it's dry that oh that's okay it, it won't come apart later because it very possibly will I did have a project that did that once so um, but it, there's so many things that you can do with these and you know if you just you know put your thinking cap on and you'll come up with a million ideas but I'm just gonna put a few pieces out here oh that's one I didn't peel I did that on purpose so that I would not forget to show you. Okay, so I'm just going to, this is alcohol ink. I'll show you the different, now with the alcohol inks, I just, or actually pretty much anything, I just paint it right on there. Now they soak in very nicely because the egg is a porous surface. It is less porous on the outside than it is on the inside. So it doesn't soak in as much on the outside, but it's not like a piece of glass where you use your alcohol inks and you can mix it together. I tried that and once it's dry, they don't, um, you can't like punch your alcohol ink on there um, or your alcohol, whatever that's called. Um, you can't punch it on there and get it to like get a mottled look to it like you can on like glass or metal or something like that. It soaks in too much, it does not. And I just use the same paintbrush so we've got kind of blue and purple going on there. But then I wanted to show you, so these are our colors here on the outside. Flip it over. See, on the inside, it soaks in much faster. And you get a bit of a deeper color on the inside than on the outside. So see, well, and this one is more purple, so it's hard to kind of see. Let's do the blue see if we can see the difference and then you can use your um, food coloring watercolors so there's the color that we have on the outside and see how deep color deep blue that is and it's not that these won't see how they're spreading together the the colors here so it's not that they won't do that when I say it's a poor surface. That's because it's a poor surface that it's doing that. See how light it is on the outside and then how deep it is on the inside. So the inside of your egg will get a deeper color. It soaks, it absorbs it in faster. And I'm going to set this aside for just a second and I'll show you what I mean about the, about the alcohol. I don't... I cannot think of what they call it, but we'll, we'll do that in just a few minutes. So let me put that brush aside and grab another one. So now this is just um, food coloring in this one, food coloring in water. And so see, those, those take very nicely to it also. And again, gets a little bit darker on the inside than the outside. Not as much with the food coloring as it does um, with the alcohol inks, but definitely still there's a difference. Then another fun thing is if they're cracked, oh, that was one of those that I didn't take the inside off of. Oh, well, that's not quite how much I wanted to crack it. I just wanted to crack it a bit. But if they have cracks in them, when you do the inside, then those cracks really show up. I should have put this like on a, something hard, but see how that's spreading 
in the crack right there there's a crack there and it just spread right up that crack and so that's kind of fun too if they've got cracks in them to put your color on there and watch it watch it spread so um so your your watercolor um watercolors are lighter alcohol inks are darker and um you can color on them with markers and with either um these are watercolor markers. You can also color on them with permanent markers. You can draw different designs that way. And then, you know, they dry on there and you've got that. Um, this is what I'm talking about. So when you have your regular alcohol inks, um, the alcohol ink companies have um, a liquid that you put on a sponge that you can use to make your colors mix together better. Now, you can also do the same thing. This is hand sanitizer um, with rubbing alcohol in it. And that's all, that's pretty much what they have in that that you, um, that you buy from the store with your regular alcohol inks. So with your homemade alcohol inks, you can just use hand sanitizer. You can just use rubbing alcohol on a sponge, which is what I do a lot. But um, normally when you do like this, what happens is the alcohol makes the um, alcohol ink kind of move and model. And because this soaks in so much, it really doesn't do much of that. And it makes it so that you can kind of move it around. And this does not work as well on an eggshell. So if you're going to do the alcohol inks and you think that you're going to do that afterwards, do it quickly. Um, because I think that it would work best if you did it quickly. But know that you're not going to get the same effect as if you used it on a piece of glass or metal or something and then did the same thing. So, and then um, if you are going, to, if you're using alcohol inks and you top coat it with um, fingernail polish, it will make the alcohol inks move a little bit. Let's see, that was not alcohol ink. This one is alcohol ink on the inside. So as you're coating, it will take some of that color off. And so... Um, what you want to do is do a quick coat and it did it more see now before I could really see the color on the outside of here um, and that's because maybe because it was on the outside because on the inside it's doing much better it's not on the inside of the egg the nail polish is not moving it or lifting it off as bad as on the outside of the egg and you can squish your egg onto your project, into your mosaic pieces, um, either outside up or inside up. So depending on what you're going to put on it, if you're going to use alcohol inks and then you want to top coat it, um, you know, with something like your clear fingernail polish, maybe put the inside of the egg facing up. See, now you can see my brush. I don't know if you can see that, but the brush is turning blue. It's lifting off some of that color. And one of them I did here. Oops. So this was on the outside, and it really picked up a lot of the color. I had kind of like I had dots on here, and the clear coat moved them around and took a lot of the color off. And so you have to be careful what you're using. Now, if you use that top coat on watercolor, water based um, ink, no problem. It, it doesn't make it move. So, um, you know, just kind of test whatever you want to use for your top coat. If you, especially if you've drawn a pattern, test it on another piece of egg with the same type of markers or the same type of ink to see if it's going to make that move. So if you have a pretty pattern that you don't want to move, you'll be able to find a different type of, of clear coat. Maybe um, if you're using alcohol inks, use clear glue that, that dries shiny. Um, if you're using water-based ink, then use the nail polish because this is a solvent, so it doesn't move the water-based product. Glue has water in it, so it does not move the alcohol-based product, but it will move a water-based product like watercolor um, pencils, and this will move solvent-based like alcohol ink. Um, but let's see here. And um, we're going to try this because I haven't tried this before. Normally, I paint the back of whatever I'm going to glue my eggs on before I glue them on. And then it looks like grout back there. 
I didn't do it on this one. I had already glued them on, so it was I had the glue on here. It was too late. So I thought, well, let's see. We're going to try and grout it. Now, first thing also that I wanted to show you is, see here I have a little bit of eggshell sticking off the edge. And um, so that's okay. Go ahead and let it stick off the edge. Get it to where you want it. And then let it dry completely. Once you let it dry completely, you can just give it a quick nip. And just make, don't try and go really slow because then you may lift it off of your cardboard. Just give it a quick nip. And that egg will just, it will just snap right there. So now right there, it's nice and smooth. We've got a little bit more right down here. So we'll just give that a quick nip. And there we go. Now that's nice and smooth. And we're going to try and grout this, and we're going to see if it works. We're going to just take a little bit of black paint and put it on there, and then wipe it off quickly with a wet paper towel and see if see if that is going to work or not. I top-coated this with fingernail polish. I was trying to think. I couldn't remember if it was fingernail polish or if it was glue, but I'm pretty sure that one was fingernail polish. So I'm just going to take... A little bit of black paint and just paint it over the whole thing making sure that you get it down into those grooves because that's where you want the color to stick and then hopefully the wet paper towel will pull the color off the top of the eggshell and just leave it down in the grooves but like I said if you paint it first um, then you already have color underneath the egg in all of your glue spots. Now where's my wet paper towel? And you do want to make sure that it's good and dry before you do this. Get another clean spot. And there we go. Now our crackle shows up much better. And that looks cute. Oh, and this one, I left one little white piece right there so that I would remember. Well, it, it was a touch pink, but it was almost white. So I put it there so that I would remember to tell you about just putting a little accent color in just in case I forgot to show you that. So we're going to just go ahead and... I'm just going to show you how I glue them down, which is simple enough, but just put some glue. And I kind of put a decent amount of glue on my whatever I'm going to glue it to. If you've got something that's very large, just work in sections. Don't try and do the whole thing or your glue will dry before you get it all done so there's that and then we'll just take a piece of our piece of our eggshell and then you can do it one of two ways I usually just set it on there like that and give it a press to get it to crack And I want it to crack into little pieces. And then what I do is take your pokey tool and then what you do is you just go ahead and just kind of grab it and slide it. And the reason that I do that is because then your cracks, your pieces, kind of line up with each other so you don't have to find a piece to fit in that spot. And, you know, I'm going to have extra here. That's okay. I will just cut that off later or at some point here in a minute. It'll wind up just, I'll break it off because it's too big. And I want to get it out of my way. And I'm going to tell you right now what I did. 
See, I never save them like that, but I've got them all mixed up, and it's very hard to tell. This is one that has the lining on it. And so it's not separating as easily because that lining is not wanting to separate. So definitely make sure that you get them prepared before you use them. But see, see how these fit together really nicely? See, now this one is not separated because of that lining. There we go. But see, your they fit together really nicely because that's where you cracked it, and all you're doing is just moving them apart. By moving them apart, you are going to have less room, and you'll have some that you will want to take off later, or even right then, but you just go ahead and normally I have them sitting on my table, but you start from the outside and just work your way around. Move that one out and then move this one out to meet it. And now my cracks are fitting together nicely because they actually just cracked apart from each other. But you have to start from the outside so that you have room to push them out of the way before you get to the center. And so just move them around like this. Alrighty. I'm going to work on this and chat with you for just a second. So normally I don't chat because my videos are three weeks ahead, but right now you're going to see this video next Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. And um, because I used all of my extra videos that I was ahead, I used, I used one of them when I was working on my 40 drawer unit. I'm going to push that one out of the way because I don't have enough room for it. Um, and then I just used two of them over the last two weeks. I didn't do any videos because I'm working on a library wall. And so that's why I, I should have done this video three weeks ago. Is when I was supposed to do it. And it's been four weeks since the, since you, I did last week's video. Um, if any of that makes any sense. But that's why I have forgotten what it was I had in my mind, the different ideas. But I still thought that there were some good tips to give you, like the way to break them and move them apart. Um, because I used to literally just break them and dye them, and then I would pick them up with the tweezers and put them on there one piece at a time, trying to find a piece that would... See, now look at this one right here. I don't know if you can see this, but see how it goes like this, and then up, and like that, and the other one goes like that, and like that, and like that. And so they fit right around each other. And so that makes it a really nice, easy way to do a mosaic. Now I should have moved them out even further because I'm running out of room to spread this middle one out. But, um, but yeah, so... I still have to finish that. I still have to finish my library wall, which is getting there. And um, then our daughter is coming in at the end of August for a baby shower, because our youngest daughter is going to have a baby. So that's exciting. And um, so I'm trying to get ready for different things and I totally tore my house apart to do the library wall because I, had, I actually pulled out the bookcases that I had in my art room and if any of you saw my art room tour you know that wasn't an easy project because my art room is literally little little tiny like walkways between so trying to get them out of there first I had to unload them then I had to pull them out and then I actually had to put another bookcase back in their place to hold the stuff that was on there and put that all back. So I'm trying to get my house back into order. So over the next few weeks, hopefully, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the videos are okay and not too kind of, I don't know that I want to say short, but, you know, just hopefully I'm not in too much of a 
too harried or whatever. But if I am, you'll understand why. Because I just have a lot going on right now. Like I said, since I don't normally chat, I would tell you right now while I was taking the time to do this. So now we have a mosaic. We have the background. And when the glue is all dry, I can clear coat it. And um, then go ahead and take my scissors and just nip off all these little extra pieces, which I don't want to do now because if I go to nip them right now, even though I want to because I want to see what it looks like, but if I do that right now, what's going to happen is the piece that's on the cardboard is going to lift off. So, but um, but that is a quick and easy way to do a mosaic and to do one that, you know, your pieces really fit together nicely. You're not trying to hunt and peck for one. I pulled a piece out right here. So you can see I've got a little bit of an extra big blue space there, but um, this is just an easy way to do mosaics. So that is what we have. I am going to let that one dry and clear coat it, and then I will be back to show you what we need for next week. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. This one dried up and I trimmed around the edges. But, um, and then as I was cleaning up, there was just a piece of blue shell there. And so, and a piece of paper was sitting there. So I just squashed it. I put glue on the paper and just squashed it on the paper and put a little word on there play. You could put a word across the top. You could even take something like a little picture and layer that on top of it. Um, you know, just. You can do anything with it that you want to do. So just think of all the different things that you might want to play with and do with these. I really have fun with them. And I actually had a girlfriend who sketched a picture of her granddaughter and used eggshells and dyed the eggshells in flesh color and the hair color of her granddaughter red for the lips. And she actually used the mosaic eggshells to make a mosaic of her granddaughter. And when she started, I thought she was crazy. And when she was done, it looked just like her granddaughter. It was the coolest thing in the world. So just think outside the box, have a good time playing with them. It's a nice cheap thing to play with. And it's also just really, really fun. So for next week, what we are going to need is we're going to use a little bit of our savings in our stash. And we are going to spend $10 on an iron. I got this at Walmart for $9.99 and um, a roll of wax paper. So for next week, we're going to spend $11. I don't actually have the bank right here in front of me, but um, I will let you know. Um, what we have left in that next week so but this is what we're going to need for next week we're going to need an iron and it this is just it was the cheapest iron they had you know if you you know if they have a little one um they had a little one but it was 20 bucks so i thought well why get a little iron for 20 dollars when i can spend nine dollars and just get a big iron so um we're going to need an iron and wax paper for next week so thank you very much for stopping by i hope that you enjoyed this week's project and that it wasn't too all over the place so but we'll get back to normal when things slow down after the summer thank you very much again for stopping by i really do appreciate you and i hope that you all have an outstanding day bye bye